everybody. I'm Jonathan Cowan, and welcome again to the House of Faith. We're so excited that you guys are tuning in today. We believe your lives are never going to be the same. They're going to be changed forever in Jesus' name. Let's pray and get right into the Word. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and hear your precious Word. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. We honor you today. And Lord, we honor you with our expectation. We're believing to receive revelation knowledge. We're believing to receive wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that we would come to, to, to know a, have a deeper understanding of who we are in you, who you are in us. Thank you, Lord, that we all have eyes that see Jesus, ears that hear his voice. And Lord, our hearts are wide open, ready to receive the word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you guys for tuning in today. You know, you guys are to be commended for sitting here and listening to the word, for making time to hear the word of God. That is something to be commended. You're setting time to honor the Lord. The Bible says, those that honor me, this is the words of God. He said, those that honor me, I will honor. So make the most of this time. Get your Bible out. Get your notebook out. Allow the Lord to speak some things to you. Allow the Lord to impart some things to you through his spirit. Amen. We believe that your lives are going to be changed through these next few minutes, that you're going to receive revelation knowledge. Right? Amen. Praise God. So we started a topic uh, last week. Amen. From uh, talking about the life of faith, what that means. We really talked about the, the, the just shall live by faith in Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. By faith, we established that that's me, that's you. We're the just. We've been justified. We're the righteous. So we live by faith. Amen. It's something that we don't separate, right? We're righteous. So we live by faith. We're justified. So we live by faith. This is who we are. This is our identity. This is who God's made us to be. That we've been made righteous. We've been made holy. We've been sanctified and set apart. Amen. Thank God for it. So now that we know who we are, we really have to ask ourselves this question. This is really key. With every part of the word, whenever God says you are something, God says that you are righteous. God says that you are forgiven. God says that you are healed in your body, that you've been made whole. God says that he'll make you rich and add no sorrow with it. That's Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. But these are the words of God. These are promises of God. But do you really believe this? That's what it boils down to. Because you can't live off of somebody else's faith. You can't live off of somebody else's understanding. Because what ends up happening is it becomes a tradition, right? That's the very definition of a tradition. It's something that's passed from one to another, right? But that's not how we are with the Word of God. Revelation is not tradition. Faith is not tradition. Amen? Faith is born out of a revelation of something God said about us, to us, or for us. Amen? And from there, faith has something to have a foundation. It's the Word of God. But it's not tradition. Jesus said that the traditions of men have made the Word of God of no effect. That's what he was telling the Pharisees. He said, your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. So the word of God, the most powerful changing agent in history, can be brought to something that's powerless through tradition. And that's the important thing is, we, we can say we agree with some of these things, but do you really believe this? Do you believe this book? Do you believe that you're righteous? Do you believe that you're healed? I can sit here and I can tell you and I can read scriptures. I can, I can sit here for all day and sit here and tell you all the reasons why you're the healed of the Lord, why you're, you've been made righteous through the blood of Jesus. But it doesn't really matter. It's not going to do you any good until you put your faith on it, until you believe it in your heart. And that's how you were born again. It's, it's not hard. This is not complicated. This is how you were born again. You believed in the heart and you spoke with the mouth. You believed in your heart that Jesus took on our sin. He died and he, was, he rose from the dead on the third day. 
And so now you and I get to believe that and confess that out of our faith. It's the same thing. When God says that you are the healed of the Lord and that by his stripes you were healed, you get to believe that in the heart and you speak it with the mouth. This is, the, uh, this is how the life of faith is. This is how we live. This is how we operate. This is what we do here in the house of faith. We believe in the heart and we speak with the mouth. This is what we do. And Jesus is always trying to solicit faith from you. Go back and look at the, the life and ministry of Jesus. How many times Jesus said, do you believe this? I can do this. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? It was not according to Jesus' will. Of course it was his willingness. We know that God's willing for all of us to, 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 to live in a healthy body, to live with all of our needs met. Well, I just don't believe that, Pastor. Well, you don't have to walk in it. <laughs> you don't have to live in it. You probably never will with that attitude. But I'm going to believe what he said over anything else. He said that God wants, that by his stripes that we are healed and that he would take sickness away from my midst, that he desires for us to live a long and satisfied life. That's the promise of God right there. So I'm going to believe that. But it, it, whether I walk in it or not is not a matter of whether God's able to make it happen or willing to make it happen. It's a matter of do I believe it? Again, go through the, the ministry of Jesus and you see how many times he says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. According to your faith. This happened, so be it a, a, according to your faith. Your faith has made you whole again. How many times Jesus brought their faith to the forefront and said, listen, your faith received this. I, this was always ready for you. You could come and take it whenever you wanted to. But without your faith, it wouldn't have happened. Without your faith, this won't be done for you. And we, we've got to get to the point where we're so fully persuaded of this. We're persuaded of the word of God. That means there's nobody and nothing. No devil, no demon, no symptom that can come and talk me out of what God said about me. I believe it that much. Uh, let's go to uh, the Gospel of John. This is one of my favorite miracles. There's so much in this, in this scripture, in, in, in this passage, where you see Jesus really exemplifying for us what the life of faith looks like. Uh, in John chapter 11, and uh, we'll start reading in verse number 1, and we'll kind of skip around just for sake of time. But in verse number 1, it says, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus Heard, but when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, for it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Verse 5, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. What? That's so foreign to so, much, so many of us, that Jesus heard they send word with a sense of urgency. Lazarus is ill and he's at the point of death. You need to come. Lord, the one that you love, we're appealing to the love that you have for him. The one you love is ill. He's sick. What are you doing here? We need you to come so that you can heal him. And it even says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But he stayed two more days. Why is that? Why would Jesus, because this seemed like such an urgent, it seemed like an urgent thing, an urgent matter. This seemed like an emergency. And yet Jesus stayed two more days. Of course, he was operating in the wisdom of God here. He was being led by the Spirit of God. But that's, this is such an important part for you and I to understand. Because Jesus didn't make his schedule centered around sickness. Well, that's a good word. Jesus didn't, didn't listen and heed and, and, and adhere to the voice of sickness telling him that he needed to get up and go right now. Why? Because the devil's always trying to get you out of your place of rest, out of peace, so that you go try to make something happen on your own. That's not how you and I are supposed to operate. Jesus 
didn't go where sickness told him to go when he needed to, when sickness told him to go, right? Sickness, this, this sickness, this illness seemed like such an urgent matter, but Jesus chose to operate in wisdom and to stay in peace. This is the life of faith. This is the life of faith. The life of faith is the life of peace. It's a life that stayed in rest. The Bible says, we who which have believed do enter into rest, right? So this is something that we do when we're believing, we're resting. We're not, we're not running around like chickens with our head cut off, trying to frantically figure out what's going on and how we can fix it. No, that's not the life of faith. What's the difference there? That's what the rest of the world is doing. The rest of the world does that. When there's something that happens, when there's something that attacks them, it's immediately, let's enter into panic. We're going to frantically try to figure this out on our own so that we can get get past this. That's not the life of faith, my dear friend. It's not panic. (laughs) It's not us just through chaos trying to make something happen. No, we're, we, we stay in faith, which means we stay in peace. We stay in faith, which means we stay in rest. This is who we are. This is Jesus setting an example for you. This is Jesus setting an example for me. He's showing us that even though there was something that seemed urgent on the outside, if you're, if you're being led by something on the outside, then you're not following peace. And that means that you're not in faith. Amen. And John chapter 14, verse number one, let me read this to you guys real quick. He said, this is the words of Jesus. He's talking to his disciples. He said, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't let them be troubled. You know what that tells me? Two things. One, it's a choice. Amen. It's a choice. And I have the authority whether or not I allow my heart to be troubled. But two, this also tells me that it's possible to not allow my heart to be troubled. So many of us are living victims to our situations, victims to this natural life and just whatever comes, and we're just constantly upset about stuff. We're always upset about this. We're agitated at this. We're frustrated about this. We're not in peace about that. And the devil just comes and he pushes your buttons because it works. (laughs) We allow it to work. And it works so well. And his goal is just to always bring something up, to bring something your way, to bring something up, to get you upset about something all the time. I've had this in my own life. The Lord had to correct me. I had to make some decisions and repent of some things because I allowed the enemy to upset me way too easily on some things. But if if it continues to work, he'll continue to push that button. He'll keep pushing that button. And you'll stay agitated you'll stay upset, you'll stay disturbed, and you'll stay out of peace, and you'll stay out of faith. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Why? Why is that? Believe in God, you believe also in me. What does that mean? If I'm believing God, if I'm believing Jesus, that means my heart's not troubled. If my heart is troubled, that means I don't I'm not really believing him. I'm not really in faith. <laughs> well, the, brother, I, I, I'm trying my best. I, sweetheart, I know we're all, we're, we're endeavoring to live this life of faith. I understand that. But when we're not in peace, we're not in faith. And we need to get to a point where we are so difficult to discourage. And it is hard for the enemy to get us upset. Not that we just fly off the handle at any little thing that happens. No, we've, we've got to make sure we're maintaining peace, which means we're living this life of faith. Even though situations come at you, even though the, the enemy comes to attack you, and we know he does. This life of faith doesn't mean that the devil doesn't come to attack you. We know he does. But it means when he comes to attack me, I'm responding differently. That's the difference between us and the rest of the world that I'm, I'm going to respond in faith rather than reacting in fear. I'm responding in faith rather than reacting frantically and in a panic. That I'm responding in faith rather than 
losing my joy and peace. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this. This is the answer for so many of you. So many of you have been living your life upset, disturbed, troubled, (laughs) just lacking peace. This is your answer right here. This right here. You need to answer this question. Do you really believe this? Do you really believe it? Because when you believe this, peace comes. Why? Because I'm trusting Jesus. He's got this. God's on it. (laughs) That's why I can cast my care on him, because he'll take care of it. The reason I'm worried about it tells me I can't handle it. (laughs) That is a sure sign of my own desperation that I can't do this. But in 1 Peter, it says to cast our care over on the Lord. This is 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you. But right before that, we see the, uh, the Peter quoting the, the, the scripture where it says that, um, that you submit therefore unto, unto God, that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Why is that? The proud wouldn't even receive the help if it's offered. <laughs> Because pride says, I got this. If I'm not casting my care over on the Lord, you know what I'm saying? I trust me more than I trust you to handle this. Boy, I know that's strong. I understand. I get that. But if I'm refusing to cast my care over on him, it means I'm tr- I trust myself to handle this more. It means I-, I have at the very least forgotten how much he loves me. Whether, whether I knew it at one point in time and have just forgotten it or I just haven't received that revelation yet. But when I know that God loves me so much that he'll come in to remove those things that are too much for me. He doesn't want me to live weighed down and burdened down. He wants me to live a life of peace and rest. And that's available for me. That's available for you. But it depends do you really believe this? That, that's the telling factor. Will you walk in it is completely dependent upon whether you believe it or not. Amen. So let's go back to John chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. And we saw Jesus that he waited two more days. He waited two more days in the place that he was. Then he left <laughs> after that. Let's skip on down, though, just for sake of time, because we're, we're running out of time already. Um, to verse number 21. Uh, It says that Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, man. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. I love that response from her, that she's not just blaming Jesus and leaving it there and saying, this is your fault. I'm mad at you. You You didn't come when I told you to come. You didn't do what I said you would do. But she said, whatever you say to God, I know it'll happen. She's still trusting Jesus. Even though she's not walking it out perfectly right now, that's okay. Jesus is willing to meet her right where she's at. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I love that. Martha is 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 making the resurrection an event. Jesus is saying the resurrection is not an event. It's a person and it's me. Hello, my name is resurrection. <laughs> I am here as the resurrection. It's not just an event and a time and a place. It's me. <laughs> I am the resurrection. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Oh, man. Hear Jesus asking you this question. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, he is the answer. But he's looking at you saying, I can help you. I'm here to help you. I've got the power to change that situation. Do you believe this? Do you? Jesus is trying to solicit faith. He's trying to solicit faith from Martha. Do you believe this? She said to him, 
Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is coming into the world. There's so much power in just saying, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus saying, do you believe this? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. What is she doing? First of all, she's, she's saying that she does believe it, but she's acknowledging his lordship over this situation. He is Lord. Yes, Lord. I do believe that. Let's skip on down to um, verse number 38. It says, Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? <laughs> Sometimes I, I can hear the Lord say that to me, that we just had a conversation and he said, Do you believe this, that I can change your situation and I can bring you out? Amen. Do you believe this? And I'm like, Yes, Lord. And then just a few minutes later, I'm telling him the reasons and things of why this isn't happening, why it doesn't look like it's changing. And he's like, did I not just tell you? <laughs> Didn't we just talk about this, son? That we just said that I can do this and I can change this. And that's what he's saying. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Boy, there's so much power there. You and I can say the same thing. When we're praying in faith, we can say, Father, I know that you hear me. I know that you hear the words that I'm saying to you, that I'm praying to you. And that's how Jesus is operating. This is so powerful. Even though Jesus was trying to solicit faith, this was so important because if Martha would have pulled her faith, she wouldn't have seen the miracle in this moment. If she came to him and said, there's an odor. And after they had just started talking about, do you believe this? And now she's backing off from it that doubt and unbelief would have came in and robbed her of the miracle Jesus was ready to perform for her. It would have robbed her of her answer. It would have robbed her of the, the freedom and the miracle that she's so desperately in need of. But Jesus, verse 42, he said, I knew, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. This is so powerful for us. Through Jesus having this conversation with Martha and said, I am the resurrection. You don't have to wait for another event or a time and a place. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Do you believe that? Jesus is your healer. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Do you believe that? He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Do you believe that? He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, your banner of victory. He is the Lord that gives you victory. Do you believe that? He is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, your peace. Do you believe this? Oh, this is so powerful, friend. This is where it takes it from just something we've heard to now it's something we believe and now we're walking in it. Amen. This is so powerful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back in just a minute. Are you looking for breakthrough in your life? Or do you have a desire to grow in the knowledge of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? This month at Cowan Ministries, for your gift of $10 or more, you will receive Pastor Jonathan Cowan's brand new book entitled, The Life of Faith. This book is written to encourage you in this life and walk of faith and produce a confidence to go after all God has for you. To receive your copy, please visit us at cowanministries.org or call us at 706-363-0771. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are so excited about everything God is doing here at Cowan Ministries and here in House of Faith. We're so excited that we get to minister to you guys every single week now. Every Friday, we have a brand new broadcast that drops to encourage you with your walk with the Lord and hopefully stir faith up in your heart. 
I want to encourage you guys to make sure to get this month's offer. It's my brand new book, The Life of Faith. For your gift of $10 or more, we'll send you a copy. We are so excited to get this message out. This is probably one of my favorite topics to discuss is faith in Jesus. And that's our whole mission here at Cowan Ministries is to teach every generation the revelation of faith. So get yourself this book, get a copy for you, get a copy for your neighbor, for your friends, pastors, get a copy for your small groups, for some of those members there at your church. We'll be happy to help you out for your gift of $10 or more. We want to send you a copy. This is really what we're talking about here this month in January is the life of faith, but we're able to go more in depth here in the book than what we can in a 30 minute broadcast. I also want to give you guys an update on our Going Strong project. We are so excited about everything God is doing in us and through us. We started our project in November of 2023, and we believe that God is increasing and expanding us and growing us. We've got some progress right there on the screen for you. We are so excited about everything God is doing. But when we started this project, it wasn't started because Cal Ministries has a need. It got started because there's something the Lord wants to give to you, what the Lord wants to give through us to you. So if you guys are believing for things in your life to be going strong this year, I want to encourage you to partner with us here at Cowan Ministries. We've released faith for a thousand partners here at Cowan Ministries because we're, we're called to go, but we don't just want to go, we want to go strong. But there's things in your life I'm sure that you want to be going strong. Your health needs to be going strong. Your wealth needs to be going strong. Your family, your marriages, they need to be going strong. Your businesses and ministry, they need to be going strong. So every seed reproduces after its own kind. So pray about it. If the Lord has you and leads you to partner with us here, I encourage you to be faithful and be obedient to what the Lord's leading you to do. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your goodness. Father, I pray a special blessing over each and every single person that's watching this right now. Father, I thank you for reminding them how loved they are. Thank you for leading them and guiding them, directing them, correcting them, instructing them, and motivating them here in this next year. Thank you for giving them a strong vision. And thank you, Lord, for giving them the faith to take the step to complete that vision this year in 2024. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, thank you so much for being a part of our family of faith. We'll see you next time here at the House of Faith. This program was made possible by the generous support of the partners of Cowan Ministries. If you'd like to partner with us or explore additional resources and teachings, please visit us at cowanministries.org. This ministry is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift of any amount is tax deductible. Thank you for supporting Cowan Ministries as we pursue our mission of teaching every generation the revelation of faith.